Right. So, hello everyone. Again, this is Moses Saldana with Fiscal Service. We want to thank you so much again for joining us and remaining patient. Uh, we're going to be getting started right now. Um, time is 1.31, uh, so I apologize for our, our lateness, but uh, let's go ahead and, and get started. Um, we are uh, going to be started on slide two. Um, I'm going to give uh, a little, some guidelines for today's session. Um, we kindly ask that uh, all participants keep their lines on mute. Uh, the moderator will be placing uh, all lines on lecture mode, so all lines will be muted, so uh, even if you try to um, speak up or unmute your lines, we will be able to hear you. Uh, we just do that for quality assurance purposes, so um, everyone on the line can uh, hear all the speakers clearly and not have any interference. Uh, if you have to step away, um, please don't place your line on hold. We have plenty of lines available, so we uh, encourage you to just disconnect and dial right back in if you need to step away. Uh, we're going to be taking all questions at the end of the presentation. Um, so for those in the, uh, that were able to access the Avaya web collaboration, uh, at the end of the presentation when we open up uh, for questions and comments, uh, we're going to have a little structure on how we're going to um, handle and address uh, all questions and, and, and comments. Uh, first, we will be taking um, those who are, who are on the web collaboration. Place them on. Begin on put on lecture mode right now. I think the back way is uh, Lecture mode started. Excuse us for that. Okay, so uh, when it comes time to give uh, or receive questions and comments, uh, we're going to um, address those who are um, able to log in through the Avaya web conference. If you can find your, uh, your name located on the right of the screen under participants, if you right click, you'll see an option that says raise your hand. So we'll address all, um, all participants with their hands raised. Uh, if you'd like to um, send us a, a question, you can click down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the message tab. You can send your message right there. Uh, just as a bit of information, all those questions are, are public, so everyone will be able to, uh, to see uh, your question that you have posed. So it's not a, a direct private message uh, to the, the moderator. Um, and then lastly, for those who aren't able to access the Avaya uh, web collaboration, um, the, mo the moderator will open up the, the floor for any other questions or comments. Um, we're gonna be taking, again, we're gonna be taking questions at the end of the, the presentation. And before making your, your comments, just please state your name and agency so that way we know uh, who you're addressing. So let's uh, begin. So my name is Moses Saldana, and I'll be your moderator for today. So for those uh, who are able to, to log in through Avaya, we appreciate it. If you're not able to log in, you can follow along with the presentation uh, materials that were sent. Again, if you don't have a copy of the presentation, arm at fiscal.treasury.gov. We have a designated person monitoring that inbox right now, and we'll be able to get you all the information you're looking for right away. Uh, today's webinar is actually hosted by the uh, division that, I, that I'm representing today. It's the Agency Relationship Management Division, also known as ARM. ARM serves as a central point of contact for promoting revenue collections management, RCM, you're gonna hear a lot of acronyms today, uh, mission and vision to its internal and external customers. So we're, we're responsible for managing the overall customer engagement and outreach activities between RCM and the federal agencies. So basically to summarize, what does that mean? We have, looks like we have representations from well over 100 agencies on the line today. So it means every single agency that is present here today, you have a designated agency relationship manager that is responsible for uh, managing uh, your relationship with uh, fiscal service. So we're gonna be touching on a lot of uh, products, services, a lot of uh, program areas. So if you ever have any questions about how to get in contact, how to find out more information about anything that we've discussed, please reach out to your uh, agency relationship manager and they can uh, set up a, a meeting or they can pass along that information that you're looking for. 
So it doesn't matter how large or how small your agency is, uh, you have a designated agency relationship manager. If you don't know who that person is, uh, again, reach out to arm, A-R-M, at fiscal.treasury.gov, and uh, your ARM representative will be in contact with you and follow up. So that's it for, for me. I'll, again, I'll be today's moderator, so I'll be uh, monitoring time, uh, and I will pass it over right now to uh, Tammy Whitaker for our opening statements. Thank you, Moses. Thanks, everyone. Again, I'm Tammy Whitaker, the Director of the Business Transformation Division here within the Bureau of the Fiscal Service. And we just wanted to start with letting you know what our mission is, the mission of the Bureau. The mission is to promote the financial integrity and operational efficiency of the U.S. government through exceptional accounting, financing, collections, payments, and shared services. Those of us who will be speaking today to you on the future of government collections and payments, I would add, represents our payment and our collections area. So moving to slide three, we will be discussing payments, collections, and then we want to end with successes. We know that all of our programs and initiatives are important to us, but it's only through the implementation through the agency that we really truly have success. So with that, I'll turn it over to Adam, who is representing payment management, and take it away, Adam. Thanks, Tammy. Hi, everybody. My name is Adam Martin. I am a program manager here at the Fiscal Service and representing the payment side of the house today, uh, unlike the, the collection side uh, that's represented by the rest of the folks in the room. Yeah, so piloting with the United States Marshal Service called NTAP. And slide four really illustrates the business problem um, that we face in payments, and that's um, primarily paper checks. So we have issued over 60 million paper checks. That's in total. That's, that's taken into consideration everything, tax, uh, refunds, SSA, VA, everything. Over 60 million paper checks uh, issued by the Treasury Department, which, as you can imagine, is very, very costly, very, very inefficient. Um, and the NTAP service I'll talk about today, we'll talk about all the reasons why uh, it's a better solution than checks. Uh, just a couple things to highlight here. Um, the uh, the happy path costs so that's so a dollar eighty two is our fiscal year fifteen fully loaded cost of a paper check uh, that is everything that goes into the production of the check so from the ink the postage uh, personnel rent utilities everything um, and again that's the happy path uh, of a check so the bottom left you'll see some agencies we've spoken with and it's really hard to quantify but a lot of agencies we've spoken with uh, we believe the unhappy path of a check could be well over a thousand dollars. So, in a nutshell, that is the business problem, just eliminating paper checks. So, uh, next slide, please. So, again, I'm here today to talk about NTAP. Um, you, you may see this name changing in the near future, but this was, uh, and, and that's a good thing. So, at the time we started this effort a few years ago, um, we thought non-traditional alternative payment was a good name. Uh, we hope that um, sooner rather than later, these are not non-traditional, they're traditional type payments. So, uh, what is NTAP? Uh, simply to the, to, to the government, it's just an EFT payment. It's just an ACH push credit. Um, uh, but again, it's not your traditional direct deposit. So to the end user, to the recipient, um, these are payments we're talking about going to digital wallets like PayPal, like Venmo, like uh, Google Wallet, um, those types of things. So again, just to us, it's an EFT payment. To the recipient, it is um, not having to share information with the government and still getting paid, again, efficiently, um, but electronically. So in a nutshell, that, that's NTAP. A million paper checks to a more electronic process. You've got tighter controls in place, more efficient process. Um, and to, to the government, to us, to the taxpayer, uh, a more cost-effective program. So again, $1.82 on the happy path for a paper check in the top right, and about a dime uh, for an EFT payment. So um, you can imagine uh, 60 million of those converted would be, would be, would be a good thing for the taxpayer. So. Um, uh, I believe the next slide, slide seven, is going to talk about benefits to the uh, to the to the end user, to the recipient. So, um, if acceptance is there, and we hope it is, we're actually currently doing a mar some market research now with our fiscal agent, the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. Um, but if the, if there is a market there, um, we believe these are the these are the primary benefits to the end users. And I'll just highlight, um, trying to get a lot through a lot of slides in in a very little amount of time. So I'll just highlight the privacy one. So. Um, we hear from a lot of agencies, from a lot of end users out there that, you know, I do not want to share my banking information with the federal government. Uh, the beauty of NTAP is um, uh, with the one agency that's piloting today and going forward, uh, 
after the payment is actually adjudicated by the agency and somebody is it is deemed that they are due that payment they really only need to share their their uh, email address or their mobile number so from a pr privacy perspective um, you know that that seems to put the um, the end user at ease that they're they're not sharing banking information and yet they're still going to end end up at the end of the day with a payment. So um, those are those are the benefits to the uh, to the end user. Slide next slide please slide eight. So slide eight is uh, that's, there's a lot there. <laughs> I'm not going to obviously go into all this, but um, so this is more of our future vision of NTAP. Just just so you know, this is the this is the federal agency user kind of workflow. Um, and there, there are two paths to the workflow. Um, so there's the information path, and that's, the, that's kind of the bottom of the screen. So the agency is obviously going to have to enter information. We have, a, we have an NTAP service, and it's a web portal today, um, where information that the agency collects, in addition to, again, either that uh, mobile number or email address is entered into the portal. And that information flows downstream to the payment networks that are eventually going get, to get that payment. So today it's just PayPal. Um, but the top half of the screen really doesn't change from what agencies do today on the payment side. We still have folks certifying payments, pushing payments out to Treasury. And again, to us, we're just issuing ACH files that end up in a, at a settlement bank. Uh, we actually have Wells Fargo for this service. Um, so day one, the money moves. Day one, the information moves. And then day two, um, PayPal and the other payment networks come into that settlement account, debit the account, and credit the associated um, uh, PayPal account. So. Um, for the pilot today, we have a non-integrated solution. Uh, it's more of a swivel chair solution. Uh, that's the, obviously not ideal, and we're building an integrated solution going forward. That slide eight really just shows the view from the agency's perspective. Slide nine is going to show the view from a kind of the, um, and, and by the way, this is just for illustrative purposes only. The VA um, is, is not using the product, uh, but this is a payment type. Um, we spoke to the VA several years back. We know there's an education payment out there. We just wanted to kind of put a, um, a visual um, to how simple the NTAP process could be, how efficient it could be for something like a VA education payment. So um, there, there's an education payment, we believe, where attendance is required, and it's very administratively burdensome. I think um, several classes have to be attended. Somebody has to go to the registrar's office, fill out a form, send it in, get a paper check from the VA, you know, long drawn out process. Uh, with something like NTAP, um, the entire end-to-end -end process, as you can see from the pop-ups, could be um, uh, really digitized from the, the initial email, from the v or the text, rather, from the VA coming in, or email, to the, uh, to the end user saying, hey, um, you know, you've signed up to get this GI Bill payment. Um, you know, uh, please go in and validate yourself, select your payment network, um, and even, uh, you could even do something on the agency side to, to um, verify attendance. So, uh, you know, the point of this slide really is, uh, no more paper. You can really um, electronify the whole end-to-end -end process, and we just kind of um, illustrated this with a, with a VA example. Uh, next slide, slide nine, or excuse me, slide ten. Um, so th what we've been doing today with, with the Marshall Service, actually we've been doing it since uh, February 15. Um, uh, it was, I think, late February 15, we made the first ever uh, Treasury payment to a PayPal account. Uh, U.S. Marshals, uh, we've done over, um, as you can see there, 390 payments, over $450,000, uh, paid 280 different deputies, um, and, and really just some background there. Um, and it's gone, uh, I won't say flawlessly, but it's gone very well. Um, you can see on the results, there, there hasn't been one misdirected payments. Again, we don't have the fully integrated solution, so we still need to automate things such as returns. Um, but this was a process in place for U.S. Marshals deputies getting paid in the field. Um, and in the past, before this service, um, folks were driving di long distances in some cases to get paper checks at field offices, negotiating those checks. Very costly, very time consuming. That would fall more closer to the $1,000 unhappy path of a paper check. Um, today, again, these, these folks are getting paid um, uh, via PayPal, no paper in the process. Um, and we're still making improvements today. So um, it's been very successful with the Marshalls to date. Slide 11. I uh, just want to touch real quick on next steps and strategy. Um, I, I mentioned earlier we, we are uh, doing a couple different things with our fiscal agent bank, the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. We're doing some market research. Uh, we strongly believe here at Fiscal that the market exists and that there's agency in interest out with you all that are, that are listening in today um, to do something like this and to get rid of paper. 
um, but we are doing some market research, research just to do our due diligence. We are also um, working with the Fed to, to scope out what a transition of the service would be. We have a vendor in place today, far base contract, and we want to move away from that and more to a Federal Reserve um, bank process. Um, so at the same time, we're, we're, still, we're still making some, uh, some functionality changes for the Marshall Service. So we're uh, you know, improving the product that's out there today, but looking more longer term, this is something, this is a service we believe that's going to sit at our fiscal agent bank at the Fed um, and expect something probably in 20, calendar year 2017 for that, for that to take place. Um, so uh, I believe we're going to go to the next slide, Mar uh, Moses. I think, I think the next slide is going to pass it over to the collections folks, um, but I'll be here throughout to field questions at the end. So I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Tammy Whitaker from collections. Thanks, Adam. Um, thanks for giving uh, examples of some exceptional payment activity going on in the Bureau. So as we already stated, uh, the mission of the Bureau, and Adam gave an, ex an excellent example about a payment initiative, uh, we want to talk a little bit more about collections. So our collections mission is to collect the revenue and associated information that enable the federal government to operate and serve the public. And in order to meet our mission, we have a vision to transform financial management, promote efficiency, and deliver exceptional revenue collection services for the federal government and the public. So we want to continue to collect the federal revenue, and we want to do it in an exceptional and transformational way. In order to do that, we have a roadmap. We, have, we, we plan to revolutionize by offering products and services that are widely used in the private sector. We want to optimize by sustaining operational excellence and continually improving our business processes. So we've been around for quite some time, and we always have exhibited operational excellence. We've always done very well on our external audits, and we want to continue to do that um, even as we do things in a more efficient and exceptional manner. We want to analyze our data by finding patterns and relationships and understanding outcomes through statistical analysis. We have quite a bit of data in all of our systems. In fact, we have more than 15 systems in collections and we want to be able to be more predictive and not just reactive and, and looking back, we want to be able to look forward with our data. And finally, what we want to do is we want to digitize by moving from paper to electronic for the collections and the remittance information, which is what we're here to talk about today. So on slide 13, we want to provide our, our e-commerce initiative uh, examples. And many of you may have heard this, um, but hopefully it's not boring or repetitive. Uh, and, and maybe there may be some new folks on the line as well. Our e-commerce vision is to unite with organizations that share common interests and goals to offer citizens innovative electronic payment options. Again, we want to be able to provide our citizens, your customers and our customers, with innovative ways of making payments to the government. We are partnered or we work with the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, who we know are on the line and they are uh, uh, critical in our fulfilling our mission and our vision. We work very closely together with uh, Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. We have three pillars. We have three tools that we use in order to meet our vision. We have online bill payment, which Irene is going to discuss through the Credit Gateway, one of our collection systems. Payments can be made to the federal government through citizens' online bank portals. We have our digital wallets, which LaShawn's going to discuss, through our pay.gov system, another collection system. Payments can be made through ACH debit card and credit cards, and now through digital wallets, which include PayPal, Dwalla, and Amazon payments. And finally, we have our mobile program, which our e-commerce program manager, Terrence, is going to speak on. Through our mobile program, through our electronic check process, processing and pay.gov, we have an agency-facing and a public-facing app which allow payments through smartphone technology. So I'll now turn, oh, and underneath it all, I'm sorry, we have our strategy outreach operations and we even have an incubator where we spend some time away from the office to think about how to do things in a new and innovative way. So I will now turn it over to Irene who will discuss online bill payments. Thank you, Tommy Whitaker. Good afternoon, my name is Irene Rivera. Currently I serve as a financial program specialist and program informational resource for the Fiscal Service Credit Gateway Program to include e-commerce payment solution, online bill payment. We are currently on slide 14. We'll begin there. Online bill payment allows individual customers to pay obligations to businesses electronically using their personal banking, um, banking accounts with the online bill payment tool. 
In 2013, the Fiscal Service, leading with Revenue Collections Management, began offering government agencies access to the private sector's banking community online bill payment network. The program is serving 11 agencies with 50 cash flows collecting revenue totaling $1.4 billion as of September 2016. The first agency I'd like to recognize um, that actually piloted the online bill payment program in 2013 was FEMA. A practical use for the online bill payment tool, assuming a customer has received a bill by mail or email, customers will access their financial institution's website using their user ID and password. The payer will then sign on into their checking account using their bank's bill pay tool. Consumers have the ability to pay an assortment of bills but not limit to, limited to mortgages, leasing agreements, utilities, fees, and property taxes. From this position, the user also has the option of initiating a one-time electronic payment or reoccurring future payments schedule. Why is online bill payment popular amongst consumers? The collection method is easy, convenient, and secure. Online bill payment can be accessed from using your home computers or mobile devices with internet access and Wi-Fi connectivity. The banking community, online bill payment customers can reach and are offered to 95% of the banking members, typically with no cost to their customers. Here are a few customer benefits. There's added value for the banking customers. Typically, banks do not charge to use the online bill payment tools. Customers will not transmit bank account or string personal identification information, also known as PII. For payment due dates, electronic payments settle within two to five business days. And electronic payments reduce the risk of fraud opposed to writing checks and mailing them through the U.S. Postal Service. Highlighted benefits for agencies. Agencies will now have the opportunity to modernize their revenue collection processes. Enrollment is free. The U.S. Treasury absorbs the cost of operating and managing the revenue collections program to include all transaction fees. There's a quick implementation time of 20 business days. There's no change in agency reporting, and there's no evasive system programming. Go to the next slide. How does this work? The Credit Gateway team created a simple application process to gather critical information about the agency's customers, collection processes, and cash flows. In tandem with the contracted financial agent, the Credit Gateway will enroll the agency as a biller in the online bill payment network. Again, the enrollment time is 20 business days. Voucher and return reporting can be retrieved by the Collection Information Repository System, also known as the SIR. If you want to know more, please use the contact information Moses Saldana has provided in this forum. The Agency Relationship Management Team, also known as ARM, will schedule an on-site or, or conference call to continue the discussion. Thank you for joining. I'll now turn the stage over to Ms. LaShawn Lucas. Thank you, Irene. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm LaShawn Lucas with the Business Transformation Division e-commerce team. Um, I'm excited to give you an overview of one of the innovative, innovative products we provide, and something that I use all the time in, in my day-to-day -day life. Um, our digital wallets operate within pay.gov. This product enables agency customers to submit their payment via a third-party payment processor instead of providing their credit card and bank account information directly to pay.gov. Currently, we have three payment choices, PayPal, Dwalla, and newly rolled out Amazon payments. Um, pay.gov currently works with 176 agencies over 953 forms. We're excited to report that currently, almost 40% of the pay.gov universe has embraced these payment offerings, which is roughly 70 agencies currently enrolled, with collections totaling over 22 million as of September 20, 2016. 
In order to provide maximum benefits, convenience, and choice, RCM is working towards transitioning all agencies using a digital wallet currently live with all three digital wallet solutions by the end of quarter one, 2017. If we could go to slide 18. Digital wallets is an alternative payment method agency customers can use to pay a fee, bill, or any other collection in an online environment via a computer, tablet, or mobile device. These payment solutions offer customers the ability to connect to their primary funding sources, typically via a bank account or credit card, by entering a username and password. Um, in this slide, you can read over the, the benefits and the bullet points um, to yourself. Um, but I wanted to highlight a great example of digital wallets providing convenient, simple, and secure payment options um, to, with our partnership with uh, Customs and Border Protection, ESTA. ESTA is an automated system that determines the eligibility of visitors to travel to the United States under the Visa Waiver Program. ESTA's use case appeals to international customers because all eligible international travel travelers who wish to travel to the United States under the Visa Waiver Program must apply for authorization and pay the required application fee of $14 through ESTA. When ESTA went live with PayPal mid-June of this year, there was a considerable spike in PayPal volume with almost $4 million in fees collected via digital wallets during the six weeks from mid-June to the end of July as many travelers found it easy to use digital wallet payment methods. As we can go to uh, slide 19. Slide 19 highlights our digital wallet providers. PayPal was the first digital wallet to, to be brought to the pay.gov payment suite. This method initially popularized via eBay has became a prevalent brand and internationally accepted method of payment even extending itself into brick and mortar stores at the point of sale in recent years. The next digital wallet offering is Dwala. Dwala was implemented two years ago and allows users to connect their Dwala accounts to their bank accounts in order to pay organizations. The most recent addition is Amazon Payments, which gives users the ability to use their stored Amazon account credentials to make a payment. This slide also goes over the history of each company. You can read read that to yourself. Um, can we move to slide 20? Slide 20 talks about implementation. There are a few steps agencies must follow to go live with digital wallets. First, the QA must be configured. The next phase in agency, which is the next phase in agency testing. Um, agency testing checks settlements, reports, and activity files. Uh, next, refunds will be tested. Once testing has concluded, we will review the documentation explaining how CIR works with digital wallets. Lastly, we will be ready for agency approval and live status. There will be a three-day notice of live status. We can move to slide 21. This slide outlines specific Im implementation timelines for agencies. It explains how long forms, web service, online services, hosted collection pages, and non-supported interfaces Will take, for, will take for agencies currently using digital wallets and those who are new to the digital wallets. If you look at the first line, you will see adding a form to pay.gov for an agency new to digital wallets using activity files is estimated to take four weeks. If you look at the second line, you will see adding web service for agencies currently using digital wallets without an activity file will take two weeks. If you look at the line for hosted collection pages, you will see agencies that are new to digital wallets without an activity file would take up to two to three weeks. This is our last slide on digital wallets, and so it concludes our overview. Uh, we look forward to your questions at the end. Uh, next, we will hear about the mobile program from our program manager, Terrence Smith. Thank you, LaShawn. I appreciate it. Once again, this is Terrence Smith, and I'm the program manager for uh, the e-commerce team. Um, let's talk about mobile, and if you re recall um, from slide 13, it was the last pillar on the uh, e-commerce e slide. Um, we're on slide 21 right now. Uh, the mobile program on the go collections is a growing suite of convenient, simple, and secure solutions designed to meet the needs of customers and agencies throughout the mobile um, age, do, do, excuse me, meet the needs of customers and agencies. We've created two applications of the mobile suite to accomplish this. First, we have the agency app, and second, we have the public app. 
The agency app is the um, mobile check capture and point of sale apps, and they are tied to your unique cred uh, credentials and eventually uh, will let you accept virtually any form of payment except for, for cash. Um, on the public cash, which, Laza which uh, LaShawn spoke on earlier, where PayPal and Diwala can be uh, accepted as well as Amazon payments. And this is going to give you the ability to store uh, a digital receipt on their phone for the customers. We implemented our first agencies onto the agency app in July of 2016. And as of last month, more than $136,000 has been processed through this app. So as you can see, agency reception has been very positive, and we're looking forward to adding more agencies and, pilot, and more pilot agencies as we move along. And if you notice also on the right, there's a little blue box there that kind of shows a testimony on the right. And if you could just take a time to look at that, that's kind of important because even though um, our goal here is really to talk to agencies to provide uh, tools that, uh, that are valuable for agencies to use, we understood that sometimes getting a uh, testimony from an agency that's actually, actually used that application is very powerful, especially in this case um, we're talking about um, uh, check capture for the app user. Um, if we can go on to the next slide, uh, slide um, uh, 23, excuse me, yes, 23. Um, the first po component of the agency app is the mobile check capture. And many of you have probably used check capture functionality that most banks now um, offer. Personally, I've been using this for a couple of years uh, for my personal accounts to deposit checks into it. I think USA Bank was probably one of the pioneers of the, of the field, and it's very simple. Basically, you log onto your bank account, uh, select the deposit feature, the amount to be deposited, scan the front and back of the check and voila, you know, funds are deposited into your account. Uh, for me, I knew this was a game changer. Uh, now with RCM's approach of meeting agency customers where they are, now we have the ability for agencies to take care, to take advantage of this, of this function as well. The agency app works very close to what I just explained, um, but instead of it for being for the individual, it allows you, the agency, to deposit the checks. Um, that are tied to your unique credentials for security, of course, from the field office rather than waiting in line to mail them to the mailbox. So basically now agency can take advantage of the mobile chat and capture that we've been using out in the public for a long, long time. It's a convenient and secure way to collect deposits out in the field. Um, next slide, please. Excuse slide. me. The agency app mobile point of sale. In the first quarter of uh, 2017, uh, we plan to expand the agency's app capability to the mobile, mobile point of sale. This device is uh, manu manufactured by Ingenico, and it means that agencies will not only be able to accept checks from, whatever they, from wherever they are, but their customers will also be able to pay by cash, both magnetic strip and EMV. And I know we, all the agencies have um, gone through that conversion last year for the EMV. Um, they'll also be able to use contactless pay, like Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, etc. So um, Ingenico will work di directly in concert with your agency mobile device via Bluetooth technology. Um, some of the benefits that we have, it kind of converts mobile, any, the, your mobile device into a point of sale terminal. It accepts all major credit cards, speeds time for the point of collection, and it offers customer service as the point of sale is actually brought directly to the customer at that point. Next slide. Be customers where they are. Um, next up we're going to have, we're going to talk about the public app, um, but we want to, this slide kind of goes to why what we talked about in the very beginning, basically meeting customers where, where they are. At RCM we seek to meet customers where they are, um, and people have preferences when it comes to making payments, rather it be utilities or parking tickets, whatever the case may be. Uh, some people just prefer to check out on a laptop or desktop, others like paying through their mobile browser. And uh, pay.gov is in the midst of making um, their website mobile friendly, by the way. And still, others prefer the app from a form fact, from a form factor, and that's where we come in, offering payments to meet customers where they're at, whether it be less la laptop, desktop, mobile web, or public app. Next slide, please. The public app. The public app does two things. It provides government agencies with streamlined means to establish a branded mobile presence and enable collections, and it also creates a digital receipt for the agency's customer. This means you'll be able to offer the, your customer the same payment methods on pay.gov, whether it be ACH, credit card, or digital wallet, but from within the app. Your customer could then save their receipt on their phone rather than having it print out. If you'd like to see this in action, uh, we'll also be able to share the Public Act promotional video. We'll send a link to Moses on that uh, when he uh, closes out this, uh, this presentation right here. 
We also offer this app as a software development kit. So if your agency has a public facing app already, then they want to add a checkout page to it. Uh, we're, we're here to help you on that as well. Next slide, please. So the public app, how does it work here? Here's a visual example of how the app works on this slide. As you can see, there are two components to the acceptance. One, the pass generated on the um, customer's phone, and two, the scanner enabled by the companion app on the agent's phone. Uh, in this example, you can see your, your customer has pre-purchased a ticket uh, to be redeemed by your agency. And on this one right now, I think we're using the example of Grand Canyon National Park here. And you can see the, the information that's actually on that screen. After that, they've made their payment. It would go through the process, and they would come back with a QR code in this instance right up here. That QR code would then say that this person, this is actually their digital receipt, would say that this person actually paid this ticket for this date, and they're going to enter this park, the Grand, Grand Canyon National Park. They would then go to the Grand National Park, and on the right side, what you see there is actually the agent's phone. The agent's phones would then have the ability, using their camera on their phone, to actually scan that QR code to say this individual has paid and they've redeemed this ticket at that point. The individual would then be able to go into the park. So you can think about the way your agency operates today, for, whether it be ticketing to passes, to uh, proof of purchase receipts. Uh, and we're here to discuss how a public app would suit your particular business or customer needs. Thank you. Next slide. This is the mobile onboarding and next steps. Hopefully after hearing about our mobile suite, um, and you're, you'll be ready to pilot. That's exciting. We're excited about it, and we've done some agencies already, and we'll talk about that on the next slide. Um, again, our agency app has the check capture functionality, functionality, excuse me, and public apps are currently available. And if you're interested, it takes about two to three months to onboard these apps. If you're interested, reach out to your ARM uh, rep um, with your agency's executive buy-in. We'll be able to happy to get this. We'll be happy to get this process started for you. Um, next slide, please. Mobile facts. We'll go over. The, there's mobile facts that you can go over and kind of look at those. These are some frequently asked questions that we have um, out there. I know some of you are sending questions in already. So if you are sending those, look over those mobile facts. They might cover some of them already. Um, but what we want to do on this one is actually go to the next slide and kind of talk about the e-commerce successes here. As we've talked about um, earlier. We've piloted um, the non-traditional alternative payment with U.S. Marshals and VA. Uh, we've implemented online bill pay through the credit gateway, as Irene spoke on, 11 agencies, 50 cash flows, 6.4 6 million transactions, valuing $1. billion, and we're still moving on it as we move up month to month. Implemented digital wallets through pay.gov, 70 plus agencies, as LaShawn spoke about, up to this point. We've implemented the mobile program through uh, uh, ECP, or electronic check processing, and pay.gov systems. We've held multiple industry days where we've talked to the private sector and um, work as, as we work with them as partners on, as we move forward. We've spoke to numerous conferences and webinars, including uh, those with international audiences. So we've spoken with at the ARM for agency forums. I know you all have participated in that. Annual financial management conferences, NACHA, uh, and agency meetings that we go to, we also speak there as well. Uh, we've held multiple incubator iterations, and this is what um, our director kind of talked about earlier, uh, looking for new and innovative ways to collect, uh, for agencies to collect funds on behalf of, the, of our government. And we've all, all this has happened because we've interacted with hundreds of agencies just like you. None of this moves unless we talk to agencies like you when we move forward. So thank you for partnering with us on that. And with that being said, we would go to our next slide. Moses Saldana. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, all right, so for those following along, we are on uh, slide 31. We're going to be going on the agency testimonial. So you've heard us do all the talking, so now it's time to hear back from you. Um, we can tell you all day about how convenient, simple, secure our e commerce solutions are. But you probably think that we are a little bit biased. Um, so uh, we have one of our satisfied customers on the line um, to give a little testimonial on the implementation of digital wallets and kind of give their experience. So just a little bit of a little bit of a background, just to kind of set the stage. Uh, I was the agency relationship manager. Uh, well, I still am the agency relationship manager for the Department of Transportation, and I presented uh, DOT with an opportunity to add digital wallets to. Um, they're pay.gov forms, and the great thing about uh, about digital wallets and about a, a lot of our um, 
our e-commerce solutions is that it can be rolled out on any size or scale um, that fits your agency's need or, or pace. So I presented uh, Department of Transportation with the opportunity to add it to you know just one of their uh, pay.gov forms that they have out there. And they were actually uh, responded back to me and told me, hey, why don't we just add it to all of it and deploy it department wide? Um, I took a minute to pause and uh, you know mm. collect uh, my excitement, and I said, okay, let's go ahead and do that. And so there, then they um, had me coordinate with uh, Dina Carolina and her staff uh, from FAA, from Federal Aviation Administration, to um, to work on rolling this out department wide. Uh, FAA does all the accounting for Department of Transportation. So again, I'm the Agency Relationship Manager for uh, Department of Transportation, and I'm also the Agency Relationship Manager for Federal Aviation Administration. So every uh, bureau, every office within Department of Transportation, I also uh, represent too as well. So the transition from working with multiple agencies in our department is seamless. It's like that for every agency. So uh, just plug in one more, one last plug for the uh, agency relationship management division. Um, with that being said, I'm going to turn over to Dina Carolina to kind of give uh, her testimonial about digital wallets. Um, I'm going to be uh, taking the lines off mute. Uh, we have lecture mode, so just for the rest of the participants, uh, we're going to get to your questions here after this testimonial. Um, so just a reminder, keep your lines on mute. Um, Dina, are you on the line? Yes, good afternoon. I'm Dina Carolina. I'm a financial specialist with the Department of Transportation at FAA, and I actually work in the Accounts Receivable Department. We've been extremely uh, satisfied with adding the digital wallet to our pay.gov form. DLT has at least over 163 active forms on pay.gov. So with DLT being such a large government agency, it was imperative to have a streamlined, convenient, user-friendly, secure way to provide more options for the customers to make their payments. So the process in adding the digital wallets to the many forms that we have on pay.gov was simple. We provided a list of applications that needed the digital wallets added. We performed, it. We performed tests on the forms and pull reports to check for accuracy. And once those steps were compute, completed, then the options were available in production for our customers. So using this option was convenient for our customers and secure, but it also helped us release the issue with handling sensitive uh, PII data. And it was simple to add. And it, again, it gives our customers more options to submit payments. And we're extremely satisfied, and that's all I have. All right. Appreciate it, Dina. And, uh, I, I swear, I promise uh, that Dina does not work for the Department of the Tra Transportation, does not work for fiscal service. She is actually is a representative of the Federal Aviation Administration. <laughs> so thank you so much, Dina, for, for sharing your, your positive testimonial uh, and your experience. So um, FAA's experience, Department of Transportation ex experience is the same experience that you will receive, too. Uh, the service uh, that uh, we, we provide to uh, DOT is the same service we can provide with your agency. So um, it, there's uh, really uh, just um, an endless uh, possibilities for just the, the, the services and the, the products that we offer. And we're, uh, we're eagerly waiting to, to work with, with any of you. We can get started uh, right away. Um, all of our uh, products and services that we've discussed today are available right now. Um, just again, reach out to your agency relationship manager. Uh, we can get that started right away. Um, with that being said, I'm going to uh, go to slide 32. Again, just to, to thank you again, plug in the um, the ARM inbox. You can re if you don't know who your uh, agency relationship manager is, please send uh, an email there, and then we'll have your agency relationship manager contact you. Um, the last thing we're going to get to questions too, because uh, we still have. 15 minutes before um, we're scheduled to, to leave, so I just want to make sure I just get through all the slides and then we can address all questions. Um, we're going to be sending out a response link to get your feedback afterwards. We value your feedback. Um, we deliver based upon your feedback. So at this webinar and, and our upcoming webinars are actually a result of the topics uh, that you have requested that you wanted to learn more about. Um, so please, we just ask you to take, take the time and, um, and respond back. Give us your, your feedback on today's session. Uh, we always look to strive to improve 
on uh, ways that we can um, we can serve our customer and our customer is you uh, so we want to we value your opinion and we'd like to hear back from you so uh, be on the lookout for a response form that we'll be sending out here uh, shortly after today's presentation uh, with that being said uh, we can go ahead and we're going to go ahead and begin with questions uh, if you if you have any questions with the way again uh, way how we're going to answer them uh, or address them is that if you can find your name on uh, on the right hand side of the screen and right click and do your raise your hand feature we can call upon those agencies first uh, then we'll address questions sent in the message feature and then anyone else uh, will be opening up the lines all right i don't don't see anyone else with their hand raised that's fine all right we received some message uh some questions to our message feature um from sba uh we asked uh when they asked when will the pay.gov mobile app be available for use well, uh, this is Tammy. I don't know that Pay.gov is developing a mobile app. They are updating their the Pay.gov application to be mobile enabled so that it can be viewable on a mobile device. Uh, it's not going to be a mobile app. But we'll still have to get back to you about when that's going to be ready. F FRB Cleveland, I believe you are on the line. Do you, do you have anything else to add in? I don't know whether Brian's still on or not, but um, pay.gov works now on a mobile device. The forms just aren't, what do they call that, responsive de design for um, mobile. However, people can still use the forms on a mobile device, and if you have a need, we can make We've done some forms where we make them more mobile friendly. In other words, we make them more horizontal for the um, collection of the data rather than <laughs> vertical. So, I don't know what that answers the yeah. question. <laughs> okay. All right. Looks like the next question came from Cynthia. She asked, hello, the digital wallet app would be a great service for student loan servicing. However, borrowers are currently not able to make payments via pay.gov. So does that mean that this service wouldn't be available for student loan servicing? And this is Brian. I believe that most of the uh, Department of Education applications are based off of a, a non-interactive uh, service, meaning that um, the service providers for Department of Education send a file to pay.gov for processing. Uh, the use of digital wallet is only available with direct interaction from the actual end user um, because there is a uh, redirect from pay.gov to the PayPal account, Amazon account, or Douala. Okay. Thank you. And again, so questions like these are, are uh, very good to, to field because we know um, that a lot of our, or I would say all of our services that we have isn't necessarily a peanut butter spread. So um, they're not going to work for every agency. So we want to sit down and have these conversations and uh, really understand your cash flows, really in, understand your, your customers. So that way we can really um, make sure that we're focusing the, the right resources and uh, developing the right solution and offering the right solution that actually meets your customers' needs. And if a, a, and if a channel isn't available yet, then we can you know work together to really uh, look for ways to actually fill that gap and and meet that need. So, um, Cynthia, if you if you could reach out to your uh, agency relationship manager, um, uh, we'd like to have a conversation so that way we can figure out a solution on how we can um, you know overcome this obstacle. Okay, I think that's all the questions that we have that were sent in the message feature. Uh, we can open it up to um, the rest of the participants who weren't able to uh, to join on the Avaya. Just before you speak, just ask that you just state your name and your agency that you're with. I think we have a question from DEA. I see your hands raised. Can you guys hear me? Yes. 
Hi, uh, do you guys have any time to go over the specifics of NTAP? Uh, yeah, so this is Adam. Thanks for that. Um, I th yeah, if you could, uh, did we take out the contact? Sorry, right, we missed the part. Okay. You can still send it to the inbox. Right. Um, What's that? They can send it to the ARM inbox. So yeah, if, if you could go ahead and send your uh, contact information to the ARM inbox that Moses provided up front, uh, I'll go ahead and get back to you and we can schedule something. Um, either come over there or have you guys over here, but I appreciate the interest. Do we have any other questions? Okay, if that if we don't have any other other questions, then we can go ahead and uh, close for today. Again, I just wanted to uh, thank everyone for your participation. Uh, this was our largest webinar to to date, uh, so this is actually shows exactly where uh, not only the market is going, but where government is going as well. So we want to just uh, thank you all uh, for your participation. Uh, and again, please be in contact with your um, agency relationship manager to get any inf additional information and follow up uh, from any of the products or services that we uh, covered in today's session. Uh, we'll still remain on the line for another five minutes if anyone else uh, wants to um, ask any other questions. Uh, if not, uh, you all are free 